moved here. <coughs> Here's the next one. Let's try. <clears throat> All right, let's say I've got uh, this one. Let's say I've got a limit with, uh, with square root. goes to 0, t squared plus 9, square root of t squared plus 9, and then not in the square root minus 3, and then I do have a denominator, t squared. Limit as t goes to 0. So again, if you check it, it's 0 over 0. <coughs> so we have to do something else. All right, well, Factoring doesn't work. Simplifying, yeah, I guess I should point out. Unfortunately, the square root of t squared plus 9 does not equal the square root of t squared plus the square root of 9. All right, that, that's something a lot of times we want to try, but it just doesn't work. You can't separate a square root when you have a sum like that. So, what can we do? Well, <clears throat> have you ever heard of a conjugate. We're going to use a conjugate here. We're going to multiply by the conjugate. That's going to be our little trick on the square roots where we're kind of stuck. <clears throat> multiply by a conjugate. What the conjugate is, if you're not familiar, the conjugate is the same expression except change the sign in the middle. So instead of minus 3, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. I'll multiply the same thing but plus 3, square root plus 3. So in other words, I'm going to multiply the top here by the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. Okay? Now if I do that on top, i got to do that on the bottom as well. So I'll multiply by the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3 on the bottom as well, because that essentially I'm just multiplying it by 1. It doesn't change its value. Okay? Now here's why it looks, it looks bad, but here's why it's good. <clears throat> if I go ahead and foil that top out, here's what happens. Well, t squared plus 9 times t squared plus 9, what happens? The t squared plus 9 is all that's left, right? The square roots cancel each other. This times this just gives me t squared plus 9. The square roots essentially cancel one another out. Then the good news too, and I'm not even going to write, I usually don't even write it, I won't write it here. <clears throat> but when you do this times this, and then this times that, what do you got? 3 times t squared plus 9. Minus 3 times t squared plus 9. What happens there? Those drop out. I don't even have to write those. And then we have minus 3 times positive 3, so we have minus 9 there. So multiplying by the conjugate on the top clears a lot of things out. So that's why we do it. Now on the bottom, I have t squared times, let's see, I'm not going to multiply this out because you'll see why. You may see why already. I'm just going to leave it as t squared times parentheses, that conjugate expression. Because here's what happens. 9 minus 9 is gone, which leaves me <coughs> t squared over t squared times square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. That's going to work out, isn't it? Because now I can cancel those t squared out. And that will leave me the limit as t goes to 0 of 1 over the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3, and now I don't have any problem with substituting. Do I? I can 
and substitute the T to be zero. Which is going to give me 1 over the square root of 9 plus 3 is 1 over 3 plus 3, that's 1 over 6. Yes? Yeah. All right, so that conjugate thing worked out pretty well there. All right. <clears throat> what about this one? What if I have the limit as x approaches 0 of x over square root of 3 plus x minus square root of 3? Well, Does the same uh, same thing as before? Zero is zero. That's what we go to, but we've got that square root, and so, but this in this case, the square root stuff is in the denom denominator, and so yeah, we can still do the conjugate uh, thing with that denominator. So do the conjugate of the denominator. So that would mean multiply by the square root of 3 plus x plus the square root of 3, the square root of 3 plus x plus the square root of 3 on top then 2. And yeah, again, really, the numerator, uh, we just want to multiply those conjugates together because the, uh, the top, in this case, uh, once it's not the conjugate, that, there's going to be some cancellation. So I don't multiply those out. <clears throat> Just multiply the uh, conjugates out. All right, so again, square root of 3 plus x times square root of 3 plus x is just going to leave me 3 plus x. Middle terms are going to drop out. And then minus square root of 3 times positive square root of 3 is going to give me what? Square root of 9, which is 3. Square root of 3 times, or negative square root of 3 times square root of 3 is going to give me minus 3 minus square root of 9. Okay with that? Hey, look at that. 3 minus 3. And uh, you can see it there. You also get the x's then to cancel. Oops. I screwed up there, didn't I? This should be square root of 3. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a square root of 3. I had square root of x there with square root of 3. So that's the top, and then the bottom is just x. Yeah, those x's are now going to cancel, the factors, so we cancel them. Aha! We got it, don't we? Now we can do x is 0. So we get the square root of 3 plus 0 plus square root of 3, which is the square root of 3 square root of 3, which that's a good answer, but again, I combine those. Like radicals, we call them. 1 square root of 3 plus 1 square root of 3 is 2 square root of 3. Okay. Now, if you think about a table of values, if you try to do a table of, I don't think you'd be able to guess two times the square root of three from your table of values. Uh, unless I guess you did. I don't. I don't think you'd get it with this. One, so. Anyway, all right. Here, like that. Uh, one other technique. Um, <clears throat> say I've got the limit as h approaches zero, one over five plus h minus one over five all over h. All right, one fifth minus one fifth over zero. That's still zero zero. I mean, you can check. But it's usually going to be zero over zero for this section here. Okay, now, <clears throat> what can we do here? Well, factoring, no conjugate. Um, well, it's kind of like the uh, combining things, simplifying things, but 
what we've got here is a complex fraction. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, combine that top fraction, those top fractions, into one fraction. Combine those fractions by getting a common denominator, which in this case, the least common denominator would be 5 plus h times 5. <clears throat> So here's uh, one way to, to do that. <clears throat> All right, so I need them both to have the same denominator, do just the top here. So uh, I need 5 plus h times 5. Well, this has got 5 plus h, so I need, it, I need to times it by 5, so 5 over 5 there. The other one's got 1 fifth, so it needs the 5 plus h, so I need to do 5 plus h over 5 plus h. Okay? Just combining those fractions. One way to do this. All right, so that makes it limit as h approaches 0. That'll give me 5 over 5 plus h times 5 minus 1 times 5 plus h. That's 5 plus h. 5 times 5 plus h. Okay, so now I've got a common denominator. I can combine the numerators because i got to subtract them. So we limit as h approaches 0. So <clears throat> on top here, I'll have 5 minus. Now, it's important here to note that minus is going to change both of those signs. But I can write them as, uh, it doesn't matter how you write those. But yeah, I can combine these into one single fraction now by just subtracting the numerators. Okay, is that okay? What does that get me? Uh, limit as h approaches zero. So this will be five minus five minus h over five plus h times five. Okay, now, <clears throat> instead of making that over h, here's what I'm gonna do. Doesn't this mean divide by h? So this would be this expression divide by h. But what does divide by h mean? Well, it means times the reciprocal of h, times 1 over h. So let me write, instead of divide by h, let me say it's times 1 over h, and you'll see why I do that as well. Okay, well, 5 minus 5, that's 0. So I get limit as h approaches 0. You got minus h over 5 plus h times 5 times 1 over h. And you can see now why I wrote that as times 1 over h, because what happens? h is canceled. So negative 1 over 5 plus h times 5. And we've eliminated our 0 over 0 in determinate form because now if h goes to 0, what do we got? Negative 1 over 5 times 5. We've got negative 1 over 25. Yeah, it's a little cumbersome, complicated, but do a couple of them. Gives a little, a little better at it, hopefully. All right, let's try one more of those. <clears throat> okay, uh, all right, so let's say we got the limit as h approaches 0. x plus h minus 3 to the negative 1 power minus x minus 3 to the negative 1 power over h. Similar to the one we did just now, but It looks a little different, and that's why the book has one uh, or two maybe like this. So, But really, this one's just like this one because h plus, uh, x plus h minus 3 to the negative 1 power means 1 over x plus h minus 3 to the 1 power, which you have to write that. And then x to the minus 3 minus 1 just means flip it over. So that's the equivalent form of that. Like I said, they, they write that sometimes in the book, so just be aware. 
that's really what they mean. Yeah, it's just like this one. So, uh, yeah, basically what it amounts to is I need to multiply this denominator by that, and then same thing, do this denominator times that, right? Which one? To get a common denominator. The one over x plus h minus 3, I need to multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. Minus then 1 over x minus 3, I need to multiply it by x plus h minus 3 over x plus h minus 3. minus 3 minus 1 times x plus h minus 3 times, and so now we've got the common denominator. we got the common denominator, so the denominator here would be x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3 or vice versa. So that's what my top part is. And then divide by h is the same as times 1 over h. I'm going to go ahead and at some point just call that times 1 over h. Is that okay? Now, a little simplifying, we've got the limit as h approaches 0, x minus 3. And of course, the simplifying here, distribute the minus 1, so it'll be minus x minus h plus 3 over x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3 times 1 over h. Nice things happen, finally. The x's go out, you got x minus x. Minus 3 plus 3, so those go out. Yeah, all that's left right there is the limit as h approaches 0. Minus h over x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3, and then times 1 over h. Aha! Same thing as before. H is canceled there. The top is negative 1. The bottom is not 0, so we can go ahead and substitute. Now, note here, what's going to 0? It's the h going to 0. So x stays x. It's the h going to 0. So that would be x minus 3 there. x plus 0 minus 3 is x minus 3. Times x minus 3. So that's our answer. One, well, it's negative 1 over, let's write it as x minus 3 squared. Okay?